This was Kay. Oh, okay, 21 years. Mm -hmm. 21 years? Yes. So I took out this one, I filled that one. Mm -hmm. And then it's like that. And a little pushed my. It's okay. If it's sealed, it'll work. Yeah, it's okay, you know, but. And now I have to fill this one, of course. It's now open. Eh, but there's, uh... This is the one you told me about? Yes. Okay. It's now looking. It's a bit. Uh... It's now looking like, like this. This is a plugger. Mm -hmm. 27 millimeter. You I know. Think here must be the. Mm -hmm. the uh... Looks looks like it's kind of across. Yes, something the, like that. The canal could actually go out like this. Mm -hmm. There could be some resorption mm -hmm. from that chronic yes. lesion. Have you have you ever thought about filling this with MTA? Yes. That's what I want to do. I think I wouldn't fill it with gutta percha. No. I think I'd fill it with MTA. Mm -hmm. Yes, but and I have to make a barrier here with the... No, no, not necessarily. Okay. The MTA likes moisture. Mm -hmm. It needs moisture on the periapical side to drive the, the cement to set hard. Mm -hmm. So if you use calico or some barrier, it's going to be bone dry, and you're going to move your mud up against that bone dry barrier, and you're not going to get a good set. Okay. So what I think you could do is, um, do you have my tape on retreatment? Yes. Okay. I use like spinal tap needle. I can mm -hmm. carry MTA in and put it up into this area. You can't just put it here. You have to get it up to about here. Mm -hmm. You can use gutta percha. You can snip it mm -hmm. and you can use it as a plugger. So in a, in a curved route, you can like push MTA around a curvature with a flexible cone. So once you get your MTA, you'll drop it off in here. You can then begin to push it up and up and up. And when you get it into this area, use the endo activator. And you can u vibrate the mud and it'll make it move. Mm -hmm. And so you don't pack the mud. If you pack the, when you're using the cone, you're only like a, like a bunch of dogs shepherd the sheep. You're like shepherding the MTA up into your narrowing diameters. Mm -hmm. So that you can use a spinal tap needle. You can carry little cylinders of MTA. You go yes, boom. I, I have those. And those you, those oops, there. and you can leave it, you can leave it, you know, right in here and in here. And then take your gutta percha cone that's been trimmed so you have a pretty good cross-sectional diameter and begin to push the cone, the, the mud up. Sometimes as you push against the mud, you squish out the liquid mm -hmm. and now it won't move. So you can take a file, dip it in some water and go back up in your mud and rehydrate. Mm -hmm. Or you can use a syringe and don't, like that, like a drop. Mm -hmm. and then just touch the side of the canal and yeah. it'll run up and that's enough. I mean, don't go like this. But you can also, for instance, take the plugger and uh, get your ultrasonics against the plugger. Yeah. Then you also see movement of the... You can do, that's yeah. indirect ultrasonics. Yes. Now, I used to do that more when we were using metal instruments. Mm -hmm. But with the endo activator and a nylon instrument, I'm not doing that quite as much. Mm -hmm because now I can, I can go around a curve, whereas with metal, it was too dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we'd put a flexible file around the curve, then we would touch the file with ultrasonics and get indirect ultrasonics, mm -hmm. and you can get movement. So I would say, with no cool. barrier, I have lots of cases that I've treated over the years where the tooth can look like this, and you open it up and you do your access. I can lay some cylinders of MTA in here, I can start getting in here with a gutta percha cone and I can start pushing this up till I have it in here, then hit it with an endo activator brrr, and it'll slump and it will almost look like you are perfect because this has got a lot of granulation tissue. This is almost like a barrier 
And so it, it will appear oftentimes that you have lifted a flap, you have curetted out the surplus, and it looks perfect. Mm -hmm. It's not that you did that, but it appears that you did that. And that's because you're using vibration versus mechanical packing. If you, yeah. if you pack, you can push the mud everywhere. Yes. I think the reason I like MTA in here is if it ever has to go to surgery, and you have your lateral incisor, and you have your wide open central with the big canal, and then you got this big lesion, if you have mud in here all the way, now you're just doing an apicoectomy. Yeah. That's a lot easier than and trying to do a reverse prep and mm -hmm. trying to reverse seal the canal. You would just simply be doing an apicoectomy. Yeah. So that's an MTA case for Cliff Ruddle. Okay. How big do you think that framing is, about 160? Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's huge. 27 my, millimeters my, away. My, my hand that is sloppy loose. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just it's crazy. I think it's so I think just the, the MTAC will be more um, responsive to moisture. Mm -hmm. It's undoubtedly there. Is this the one that was gushing out and yes. all this exudate? It's and gushing. It'll, it'll be interesting though, when you see them, it might be more chronic. Mm. It might not be doing that. So, it shouldn't be doing it uh, after a while. Well, it could, it could if it's like really just a huge, huge lesion. Mm. But I think you're basically like IND, you're draining it through the tooth. That's yeah. good, it's conservative. Mm -hmm. See if you see if you can dry it. If you, if you can't dry it, then you could use calcium hydroxide. Uh, calcium hydroxide is really good at, on the subsequent visit, usually you can abort uh, drainage. It will really shut down bleeding and drainage. Yeah. And then take out your calcium hydroxide with the endoactivator because you're not trying to make the canal bigger. The canal is already too big. So you're just using ultrasonics or sonics just to remove the calcium hydroxide so then you can get to the mud. Are you also putting calcium hydroxide in, in it with your endoactivator? What I'm doing is, the calcium hydroxide is, is um, I get it from Pulp Dent Corporation of America, PCA. Mm -hmm. It comes in a syringe, and it has multiple cannula, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So I can choose the cannula that fits. You can try the cannula in. If you like it, screw it on your instrument. Then you have threads, and you turn a plunger, and it, is expressing calcium hydroxide. So mm. I'm putting the calcium hydroxide in with this cannula, mm -hmm. but it's kind of loose. So then I use the endoactivator and hit it, and it throws it up against the walls. Okay. So now you get better adaptation. Mm. In fact, Wesselink at your town, yes. he said perhaps the only way to remove calcium hydroxide is with ultrasound, mm. because it's, it's very hard to get it out of these grooves and stuff. Mm. And you can, your file's working out here, so the colleague is going bigger and bigger and bigger files. Well, we already have too much, we're too big. So we don't want to touch the dentin any more than we can. I think calcium hydroxide is if you can't dry it after it's been open for a few days, let it sit for 10 days or a week, or mm. two weeks, have them come back, pull it out, see if you can dry. If you can dry the canal, you're off to MTA. But you want moisture up here and you don't want to use Colicoat because you'll fill the whole lesion with Colicoat and the lesion's huge. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be so dry, it'll be as dry as your pants. Mm -hmm. And so now when you put your mud up against it, the mud's not gonna set up, it'll be loose because it needs moisture, like mortar. Yes, okay.